Um, hello, so I'm carrying on my, my, my English uh, Lord channel, and um, so uh, this is more about accepting um, contracts. So there are different um, uh, methods of accepting um, contracts, and sometimes the offer says only a certain method may be employed uh, in accepting it. Um, for example, there's Manchester Diocese and Council for Education and Commercial and General Investments, a 1979 case. Um, so uh, sometimes you can infer from the offer the type of, uh, of method to be used for the purpose of acceptance, such as um, uh, Quenna Durain and Cole, um, 1883. Um, so let's look about um, the end of, of an accepted offer. So offers are not there forever. If it's not accepted within a reasonable time frame, then the offer is, is held to lapse, even if, if, if no time frame was, was specified. How long is reasonable? That's an imponderable. The courts will make up their mind. Now, how, what if you, you change your mind? Um, supposing um, a contract hasn't been formed and one of the parties decides that uh, he wishes to pull out of negotiations. Um, according to Payne and Cave, 18, 1789, that's allowed. So, um, sometimes an offer uh, has said that an offer shall be available for a limited time period and is set the deadline after which it lapses. However, prior to that deadline, he has the right to withdraw the offer. Um, so, but uh, there could be a separate and binding collateral contract saying that the offer will be open until that deadline and, and cannot be withdrawn beforehand. Um, uh, for example, Routledge and Grant, 1828. So um, an offer can revoke an offer. However, for this to be effectual, it must be communicated. There was um, Byrne um, and Van Tienhoven, 1850, sorry, 1880. So um, the, the, the revocation in that case did not need to be communicated. So, um, so communicating indirectly could be enough. That's as, in, as per Dickinson and Dodds, um, 1876. So unilateral contracts are tricky because you place an advert in a newspaper and how do you tell everybody that you've actually withdrawn the offerer? So um, uh, revocation is allowed sometimes. Um, like Errington and Errington, 1952 it wasn't, or Salisbury and Salisbury, 2007. But um, uh, anyway, um, revocation isn't always possible. There was Eastbourne Limited against Cooper in 1941. So the House of Lords said that revoking a unilateral offer um, after an offer has begun, begun um, performance um, uh, might not be possible because that would be unjust, right? And it's an implied term that it shan't be revoked. Uh, okay, so, but if, if you've done very little work for a very great reward, then um, then the revocation will, will be operative. Or there's a case called Dowlia and four Millbank nominees, 1878. Here it was um, said that uh, you uh, you had to do what you need to um, uh, give give a business efficacy. All right. Um, anyway, so we'll go on to to um, uh, other situations. How do you withdraw an offer in this case, a unilateral offer? Well, there's an American case of Shuey and the United States, 1875, which quite logically says you can withdraw this unilateral offer by the same manner in which you made the offer, as in advertising in the same newspaper on the same page, that kind of thing. Um, OK. So um, now there, there, are, there are other tricky situations where um, uh, an offer is made, an offer he accepts, but then he or she changes his mind. So you post a letter of acceptance, decided actually you don't want to accept, post another letter to saying that you reject, you reject it. But um, what happens if the two letters arrive at the same time? So um, there's Dunmore and Alexander in 1830 about someone cleaning a house or whatever and the house burnt down so now there's no need to clean it the oddly wasn't treated as a case of frustration but anyway it was said that the um changing your mind the withdrawal of the acceptance operated and van Kaim and aunt 1873 um was was about a similar um a situation okay so uh it was it was a new zealand case so um if there's a condition the offer which is not fulfilled, then that offer lapses. So an offer might be made and it's with a proviso that a certain condition is satisfied, um, but the offer will terminate if that condition is not satisfied. That's as per Financing Limited and Stimson, 
1962. Um, so, uh, okay, how about if the, if the offerer dies? Well, the law's a bit unclear about this. Um, so um, Bradbury and Morgan, 1862, said that if the offerer um, dies, then his estate must still honour that offer. Um, whereas in um, Dickinson and Dodds, um, 1876, um, said that if either the offer or the offeree dies, then that means that there is no contract, there can be no meeting of minds. So we talked about or talked already about how offers lapse after a time period, um, such as offered uh, and um, Davies. If an offer is made, you have that offer for a very, very long time, then you accept it, it's too late. Um, okay, so uh, sometimes no, no time period is set out at which time the, the, the offer will lapse. But nevertheless, the court will assume that after a reasonable length of time, then the offer is no longer there, as, as per Ramsgate Victoria Hotel and Montefiore, 1866. So that's um, just a little bit about offer and, um, and uh, acceptance. OK, so next time we'll move on to consideration.